You may remember our coverage of U.S. Virgin Islands delegate Stacey Plaskett's ties to Jeffrey Epstein. Well, journalist Lee Fong took a closer look and found that before Plaskett won a seat in Congress, she actually worked for Epstein's personal lawyer and tax accountant, known for peddling influence for the powerful pedophile. Investigative reporter Lee Fong joins us now to expand on this. So great to see you, Lee. Good to see you. So please tell us more about what you found. I think where we left the story off was evidence that um, she had wanted him to attend a fundraising event with, you know, with full knowledge of who he was. This was this was up to, I think, just a year before his death. This was like 2018. So, you, you know, no pretending you didn't know what a monster he was, all of that kind of thing. The usual denials we get from people. This was full awareness. Um, you know, tell us more about how deep her connections m might have run. Yeah, so these, um, the story that I wrote about uh, Delegate Stacey Plaskett uh, shows much deeper ties to Jeffrey Epstein than previously known. Um, this is a sitting member of Congress, someone who votes in committee, uh, who has a lot of influence in politics and the media, who before she entered Congress uh, in 2013 and 2014, worked for the boutique uh, legal and accounting firm that served Jeffrey Epstein. This is Erica Keller Hall's um, firm uh, in the Virgin Islands. Uh, I, you know, we, we've seen in the media and, and so many reports, um, you know, looking through documents, flight logs, uh, connecting the dots of Jeffrey Epstein's network that he cultivated influence with some of the leading private equity executives in this country, Leon Black and others, other corporate executives, uh, political leaders, philanthropic leaders, uh, prominent scientists and politicians. Well, here's someone who uh, literally worked uh, for one of Epstein's closest aides, someone who helped him peddle influence, uh, win lucrative tax breaks, uh, engage in a lot of the business deals, transfer the property that he used to um, molest and, and abuse women and, and engage in human trafficking. Uh, and, and who's still, you know, um, uh, c connected to Epstein. Epstein, after he passed away, two, uh, two days before he passed away, uh, he signed um, documents to Erica Keller Halls that, ga that gave her control of his estate. Uh, she's continuing to uh, work for his estate. Uh, so this was w really one of um, Epstein's closest aides. And your story paints the picture of a little bit of a cover-up here. You write that the two years during which uh, Plaskett worked for Epstein's lawyer, those two years are notably missing from her LinkedIn account. And moreover, it's not just that she worked for this lawyer, but that she previously served as counsel on the Virgin Islands Economic Development Authority, which granted Epstein $300 million and allegedly improperly obtained tax exemptions over the course of two decades. Yeah, this is really kind of a, a, an astounding fact about Epstein that has come to light in the last year uh, with some of the latest uh, litigation um, around his abuses. Uh, Epstein you know, purchased uh, various properties in the Virgin Islands, of course, Little St. James Island, where he abused women, but also other properties. He domiciled there, and that was his residence. Um, for his $500 million uh, business empire, he received... $300 million in tax exemptions over 20 years from the Special Economic Development Office in the Virgin Islands. He uh, claimed that his company was a biotech startup uh, studying gene technology um, and therefore, you know, needed special startup uh, tax incentives. But there's no evidence that he uh, engaged in any of this kind of startup activity. You know, he just had property and financial investments. He Im improperly received these massive um, tax exemptions from excise tax, income tax, um, uh, property tax. Uh, and uh, it, there's still big questions about how he received these uh, very lucrative uh, tax credits he re and uh, given to him by this economic development uh, agency where Plaskett worked for several years. Uh, she then went through the revolving door to this specialized um, tax accountant uh, legal firm, Erica Kellerhall's firm, that, that helped channel uh, these tax credits to Epstein, and then uh, went into Congress. And, of course, the, the documents paint um, uh, many other uh, interesting details. Uh, Stacey Plaskett was introduced to Epstein uh, by Erica Keller Halls. Uh, she, Erica Keller Halls helped facilitate many of the direct uh, donations uh, to Stacey Plaskett uh, as um, 
Plaskett uh, solicited Epstein in 2018, a year before his death, uh, for $30,000 to the DCCC, the House Democrats campaign arm. Again, that was Erica Keller Hall's uh, uh, forwarding on that appeal. Hmm. And, and you write, you know, in your Substack piece about this that Plaskett uh, has misled the public about the extent of her ties to Epstein, which I think is very interesting given um, how militant she was, you know, that every I and T be exactly crossed and dotted in, for instance, Matt Taibbi's testimony about the Twitter files where, you know, because of the uh, not significant but and, and corrected error about you know, which acronym uh, was in, involved, not that, you know, we've, we've gone over why ultimately that doesn't matter. And in fact, that agency was involved in, in the funding of, of this kind was involved in the pressuring of the Twitter files. Uh, she, you know, said that Taibbi should uh, reminding him that, uh, you know, perjuring yourself before Congress is a, is a crime that could carry like five years um, in prison. Has, has she been uh, as honest as she demands everyone else be with respect to her own involvement with Jeffrey Epstein? Look, earlier this month, uh, Stacey Plaskett appeared on the NPR affiliate station in the Virgin Islands to, to address some of these accusations that have come out in these recent court filings. And she claimed that she was unaware of Epstein's donations and was alerted by the media. That's clearly not true. Uh, we see from the many emails that you, you covered on this program and what I covered in my story that she was actively soliciting Epstein's money, um, knew exactly who he was. Um, and it, it, during the same interview, she claimed that she was the only politician uh, who received Epstein money to then donate that money back to charity. Uh, that's clearly not true. Um, many Virgin Island local legislators who received this money donated money to charity. Chuck Schumer, who received Epstein donations, uh, gave it to charity. You know, these emails show that uh, th there was a very methodical uh, political op operation from Epstein and his aides. He wanted exemptions to sex offender law so he didn't have to disclose when he was traveling in and out of the country. He wanted these tax exemptions. And he also uh, wanted to make sure that he had no local critics. You know, cultivating people like uh, Stacey Plaskett meant that he wouldn't have as many prominent local critics of his, um, of his criminal behavior. And look, uh, at, at the end of the day, Stacey Plaskett did donate the $8,000 in direct donations she received from Epstein. But we see from this recently disclosed, unsealed uh, court deposition that Epstein and his aides actually bundled $30,000, in excess of $30,000 to Stacey Plaskett. Um, she has not donated uh, those bundled donations uh, to charity. Incredible. And I don't suppose there's been much of a reaction, or I should just ask you, has there been any, re any reaction from congressional Democrats about this or Republicans? Uh, and do you expect to find additional relationships as the J.P. Morgan case proceeds? Well, look, as we've seen over the years of Epstein investigations, I mean, this was a bipartisan controversy. You know, there were Republicans and Democrats that were in the, the world of, of Epstein that you know, traveled on his jet uh, and, and received his either philanthropic or political donations. So there, there really hasn't been, this hasn't been turned into a, a partisan kind of issue where one side's looking into it on both sides. Uh, have so far ignored uh, the mm. latest uh, revelations that we see in these court filings. Um, you know, uh, we, we, we will see much, I think, many more disclosures from this uh, litigation that we, that's, going, that's going forward in the Southern District of New York. J.P. Morgan uh, was sued by two parties last year, a number of victims of Epstein. That case has been settled. But then there's this ongoing case between the Virgin Islands and uh, J.P. Morgan that has really revealed this entirely... Uh, n not new, but uh, newly unearthed uh, political network in the Virgin Islands that Epstein controlled. Uh, the governor of the Virgin Islands, Governor Bryan, uh, is set to uh, be deposed. Um, we'll see if those uh, deposition records are filed in the court and, and, and released to the public. Incredible reporting as usual. Lee Fong, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me.